Hi, I'm Doug Clark, and today I want to talk to you about helping players articulate um, explicit mental models and productive mental models. But before I start, I want to acknowledge my um, colleagues on the Surge team, including my co-PIs Gautam Biswas and Pratim Gupta and our graduate students at Vanderbilt, Filament Games and Funky Pear Studios, and our colleagues at Arizona State University who worked with us on our first grant. Um, asking whether games are good for learning is a bad question. It's just like asking, are labs good for learning? And as the National Research Council's America's Lab Report makes clear, it's the design of a learning environment that determines how effective it's going to be. Games, are, in this sense, are just a medium with specific affordances and constraints. And in terms of our own work, it's really important to understand that at the heart of digital games are simulations, whether it's a golf game, whether it's World of Warcraft, whether it's an undersea exploration, and well-designed digital games help players construct productive mental models for operating on those simulations. And at least for commercial games, if they can't, um, they leave, if they leave their players confused, they don't make any money. And under these Darwinian influences over the years, a number of mechanics and mechanisms have evolved for helping players um, develop these powerful intuitive understandings. A lot of the focus has been on engagement and affective investment. And that's indeed critical. But well-designed digital games also provide consequential action and meaningful play. They allow players to take on implied perspectives and principled stances. And um, they provide approachable entry and guided trajectory for players as they um, investigate various facets of the simulation in increasingly complex ways. And just-in-time feedback to help the players refine that understanding. And that was really the focus of our first grant. Um, we were looking at how uh, popular game mechanics might be integrated with formal physics representations and concepts, concepts um, to support learning. And we made progress. We saw significant gains using the design principles that we developed through that grant on items based on the force concept inventory, which is a benchmark for conceptual understanding of physics at the undergraduate level, even though our students were eighth graders. Um, and Using those design principles, we also saw that learning and affective outcomes weren't skewed by gender or prior gaming experience. So it wasn't just boys or boys who played games who learned. Um, we had um, broad appeal. So that was a start. Um, but we realized we needed to provide much more support um, for the explicit articulation of that intuitive understanding that players were developing. And this really isn't surprising. If you think about it, a player of a well-designed commercial game um, after they finish playing it on a hard mode, you don't have to give them a test to see if they know how to play the game. But that doesn't mean that they can articulate that understanding or that they can apply it outside of that game. The commercial game just cares about, can you learn to play our game? We care about something more than that. And so essentially our question became, how can games um, more effectively bridge these in powerful intuitive understandings with more explicit formal understandings? And this isn't a new question in education. At least going back to Vygotsky, um, in Thought and Language, he talks about how spontaneous concepts, by which he meant um, informal or intuitive or everyday ideas, can be used to bootstrap formal or classroom or what he called scientific concepts. And people have, been, have studied that um, in, across a number of contexts over the years. And now our research is really focusing in the context of, of games. And the way we're doing that, we're looking at a, we're continuing to study these um, powerful mechanics that popular games have evolved, but thinking about what can we take from research on science education and the learning sciences, psychology, and computer science to help players then articulate their understanding through those mechanics. And it's not necessarily a straight port. The mistake is to say, we're going to take what we've done in the research and stick it in a game, and that's going to work. For instance, there's been a lot of research on prediction and reflection in science education and psychology, showing that, that is a, it's a powerful way to get people to um, reflect upon and um, refine their understanding. But in most of those studies, that means let's have the student grab their notebook and then go do, um, write down what they think they're going to see. Then we're going to go over and do something. Then we're going to come back to our notebook. And that's in a, that works within the mechanics of those kinds of settings. But it won't work, um, and it's very disruptive, to these same popular mechanics that we're talking about that are so good at building engagement and intuitive understanding. So what might prediction mean? What it, wait, let's, 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 let's go a step further and say, OK, what is prediction in a way that will have these same benefits but that is synergistic rather than disruptive? 
to the other mechanics. So what you see up at the top here is, um, this is a game we've developed with Funky Pair Studios as part of our new NSF grant. And it's through the way the player navigates through the universe, um, we're trying to incentivize prediction and trying different ways to do that. And down below as part of our Department of Education grant is a game that's going into production with Filament Games this month, um, where we're exploring predictive interfaces from a different perspective. Um, similarly, in terms of explanation argumentation, there's been a lot of research on it. Um, Mickey Chi's work on self-explanation shows that simply prompting students to explain um, what they're doing leads to more robust understanding. But what does that mean in a way that would be synergistic with, it, with our other mechanics? And so, and well, and it turns out that dialogue in games is, a, is an important and popular part of games. And often, interestingly, it's fairly simplistic. So here is an opportunity for us to take an existing mechanic and actually improve it rather than diminish it. So we're looking at explanation within the interface, um, within, I mean, within the dialogue. And so here you see an early alpha in Flash we built for our NSF grant where the player, um, after completing a mission in this game or avoiding some you know, horrible disaster, um, a computer controlled character comes up and says, hey, great job saving our friends. Um, can, we we want to do the same thing over in this other sector, but uh, we don't know how. And so can you help us? And so this gives the player a chance then to help that character identify a solution that might be productive and then convince the character that it, it's likely to succeed. Um, and, and, they, and this explanation is, hap, happens in terms of using the physics principles to convince the character that they should take their chances on it. So that's just an example of augmenting an existing mechanic with research from outside to support explicit articulation. Similarly, we're looking at um, modeling, which has been shown to support students in articulating their understanding, what that might mean within the mechanics of a game. Um, also, as has been mentioned, these social communities that develop around games are very powerful um, for helping players refine their strategies and, and approaches. And so um, right here you see in, in our NSF grant, we are now allowing students to post hints and strategies for each other after every level. And so here you see some um, of the comments posted by students in one of the classes for one of the levels. And we're also conducting a study right now about the real real-time face-to-face collaborations that happen. Even though these students are all working at their own computer, they still um, spontaneously collaborate with one another in rich ways. And so we're studying how might we scaffold that so that, again, we're um, supporting sp the, sp the kinds of explicit articulation of the physics understanding that we're um, pursuing in this context. And also because it, can, it will inform our design of the dialogue I talked about on the previous slide and the design of our scaffolding. Oops. So, and then from computer science, again with this theme of how do we take this research from other areas to augment rather than diminish the mechanics that are already um, proving so effective for developing intuitive understanding, we're looking at real-time diagnostics and hidden Markov modeling um, to aggregate across levels players' activities so that we can um, develop um, it's some, or make inferences about what the players do or don't understand so that we can provide personalized scaffolding. And again, this is building on a critical mechanic already within games, this idea of just-in-time feedback, only we're making it better. Um, and so far, we're in our first year of these two new grants, and we're making good progress. So far, we have a low bandwidth browser-based tech um, framework that actually works in real schools that we're really excited about. And we've seen significant gains in larger effect sizes on one of our first runs um, with, a, with an alpha of our new predictive interface compared to the gains we were seeing in um, our original grant with our real-time interfaces. I've mentioned the study on collaboration, and we're seeing learning across a broader range of topics. So that's how we're trying to move beyond this simplistic idea of our games good for learning to what might make them good and what might, in our case, what designs might help players explicitly articulate productive mental models. And we really think it's at this intersection of these um, mechanics and mechanisms that are so good at um, helping players develop intuitive understandings and then um, augmenting and expanding in very synergistic rather than disruptive ways that learning to help them articulate it through this research on science education, the learning sciences, psychology, and computer science. So with that, I'd like to encourage you to go to our website and see what we're doing, and I'd like to thank you very much.